I'll go ahead and broadcast. So we're we're on. Thank you. Welcome to the meeting of the Traffic Management Advisory Committee. Um, I'm Seth Bauer. I'm the vice chair and I'm chairing the meeting tonight in place of Justin McCullen. Um, I have a script that I'm going to read that uh, describes the open meeting process in the time of COVID. So just to start with, uh, Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So each member of the committee, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Anthony Delgazo. Yay. Rain Hoyland. Absent. Lieutenant McGrath. Present. Uh, Rebecca Tarantino, Donna Mullen, yes, here, Suzanne Stein, present, and then each anticipated speaker, uh, I'm going to go through your list too, um, although I don't have it in front of me. Anyway. You want me to go through it, uh, Seth? I'd appreciate that, Daphne. Okay, we, uh, John Sussman. Yep, present. Arlene Breyer. Mark yep. Hasser. And Vasu Taluri. Present. All right, so this open meeting for the Traffic Management Advisory Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meetings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to, remit, to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public ac access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the, of the meeting. This meeting is a webinar and will allow public comment. For this meeting, the TMAC is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share on your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body and are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down the line of members or I will invite the members of the, of the committee uh, to provide comment, questions, or motions. Um, and I'm gonna amend this to say, usually I ask the town officials on the committee to speak first uh, because they provide the most informed opinions and then uh, and they often clarify matters of, of law and rules. Uh, <clears throat> members, please hold your name, or please hold until your name is called. And for everybody, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. And for any response, please wait until the chair ye yields the floor to you and state your name before you speak.
for items of public comment. <coughs> After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. I will open the item for public comments at the, by the raising of the electronic raise hand, which is one of the features of, of Zoom. For those participating by computer, the raised hand option can be found by clipping, clicking the participants button at the bottom of the screen. It will bring up options to choose. Select the raise hand. For those participating by mobile advice, click the more button at the bottom right and select raised hand. I will call on each raised hand in the order received. Please identify yourself by name and address. You'll be afforded up to three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. So that concludes the formalities. We can get started. Um, we have called attendance. So the first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the November 18th, 2020 meeting. Uh, have the committee members been able to review those minutes? And uh, does anyone have any questions, objections, comments? Oh, I see Rebecca has joined us. So I assume you're recording that, Dabney. I have no questions and move that the minutes be accepted. I second. All right, Daphne, please call a vote. Mr. Delgazo. Yay. Mr. Hoyland. Yay. Mr. McGrath. Yay. Mr. Bauer. Yay. Mr. Tarantino. Miss Tarantino. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Ms. Mullen? Yes. Ms. Stein? Yay. The motion has passed. The minutes are accepted. Good. Uh, next order of business is uh, we turn to uh, Bob Wilson from the town yes. who uh, tracks all of the previous requests and, and the decisions of the TMAC and gives us an update on the status of of uh, items that are in progress. So Bob, anything to report? Okay, uh, not too much today. Um, what we have to report is at the Oak Street and Chestnut Street intersection, uh, the no turn on red sign and the uh, stop bar have been moved. And hopefully uh, as of yesterday, the changes to the signal timing were uh, voted on by the select board for uh, eliminating the northbound left turn lag, lag uh, phase. Can I just tell you that like the day after that it was, the day after it was changed, it was a Facebook topic. People said, <laughs> they, I just, we just noticed that you can turn right on red on Oak Street. Is that a mistake? Is it coming back? <laughs> <laughs> and I had so much fun with that. I just have to, you know, it was, it was very good. Joy. So thank you for that. No, that's not oh, me, um, but I think that is generally it. We're kind of stuck with the snow weather for the traffic counts. It gets a little iffy to do some of the counts right now because of snow that comes and the snow plows. And, but I mean, they're coming, they're scheduled. It's just, it's kind of on the weather. Right. As far as those go. Great. Well, could you also... this... <clears throat> go ahead, Rain. Bob, could you also update us on Central um, at Great Plain with the board meeting? Uh, I don't, uh, they were sent, the signal timing changes at Central and Great Plain were, uh, I believe, were sent to the select board last night also. I don't know how they voted on it, but I do know that they were sent there. Thank you. Excellent. So let's um, move on to our first citizen item of the day, which is a follow up on the signage on Rivard Road. Um, John Sussman came to us last month and uh, promised to come back with a, a petition. Um, John, do you want to do you have anything you want to comment? Um, 
not other than I sent the per, uh, the petition maybe a few days later or a week later after our last call on um, November 8th. Um, I could screen share it if you want, or um, I could just talk about the contents in it, whichever is easier for you. But I essentially um, wrote up a statement of what we're looking for, which is the children playing sign or children, you know, slow children live here at, at the bottom of our street. And uh, I got 12 signatures, including the signature from where ideally the sign would go in front of the house where the sign would go in front of. So um, this is just the follow up. That was the that was the action item. And yeah, I just wanted to follow up. Thank you. Uh, any board members care to comment? And if not, can we uh, will someone propose a motion to uh, What's the exact uh, wording of the sign? Do we know that? Yeah, um, I've seen various ones. I'm not too particular about that. It could be, it could be, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what the most common ones around are around Needham, so I don't really want to be, be uh, I could do a little bit more research. I don't know if you guys have suggestions, you might be the experts actually. <laughs> Tony, are there like ones in stock that you guys have? Uh, not necessarily in stock, but they are standard signs, children playing signs, uh, which are which are standard that you can buy. That works. When I get, I'll make a motion to place children playing signs on Rivard Road in front of house number. Um, so the house is, I think there's a telephone pole in front of uh, 10 Rivard Road. Okay. That's probably the most logical place. The only other place I could think of is at the very beginning of the street where Rivard hits Great Plain. Um, either of those would work in my opinion. Can I ask you which direction, is traffic typically coming from Great Plain or is it typically coming from Curve? It's coming from Great Plain. Okay, so then you want it on, is that the side of the road you're talking about facing? So yeah. Right? Okay. Yep. You wanna finish the motion, Rebecca? <laughs> Yeah, so I've, although I'm terrible, you all know I'm terrible at the east, west, north, south. So on the side of the street that you're turning on from Great Plain toward <laughs> Curve Street, that there is a telephone pole that should have a sign that says slow children at play in the middle of the street. But so that sign needs to not be flat on this pole. It needs to be facing the oncoming traffic, right? Oh, no. So I, I was thinking it would face when you make the turn. So maybe it does make sense to put in front of... Um, 10 Rivard Road instead of on the corner. Because I think that it, it, otherwise, or, or it could be both ways, coming from both ways. But I, I would probably suggest 10 Rivard Road. That might be more, that might be more useful. The only amendment I would make to that is it needs to be freestanding. Uh, we don't own the telephone poles. Uh, that's property of somebody else. So we just, I just would amend that it'd be fr uh, freestanding. That's all. Yeah, it's no problem. All right, so can someone state the motion uh, clearly and decisively? I, Tony, do you want to do it? You're, I think I can do it now. I think okay. I can do it now. So I motion to put a sign that says children at play on Rivard Road in front of 10 Rivard um, facing with the sign facing Great Plain Ave on a freestanding sign. Yeah. My, yeah, I mean, I think it probably makes sense to put it on the opposite side of the street of Tenor Road. Road. Um, so it's not, um, I think they'd prefer that probably more because there's no house on the, there's no house, there's no house facing Tenor Road. Road. So just out of respect for them, I think okay. that's probably what they would want. So across from Ten Rivard. Yeah. yeah. Across. Okay. Okay. Across the street from Ten Rivard facing Great Plain Ave. Yep. Okay. Does anybody second that motion? I second the motion. Daphne, will you call a vote, please? Mr. Delgazo. Yay. Mr. Hoyland. Yay. Mr. McGrath. Yay. Mr. Bauer. Yay. Ms. Tarantino? Yay. Ms. Mullen? Yay. Ms. Stein? Yay. The motion passes.
There you go. Thank you, John. Yeah, <laughs> thank, you, thank, thank you, John. Uh, just the last question. What typically is the kind of like next steps and timing for that kind of stuff? Oof. <laughs> Um, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. If it's not, if it doesn't have to go to the board, um, we would get a, um, um, a work request from the engineering division to the highway division and we would install it. Um, I think we have one of these signs in, in, in stock at hand. So it sh it'll be a couple days after we get the work request from engineering. Okay, but this isn't the kind of thing that will take months. No, I prefer to get it in because we all voted on it before we get frost. Yeah. So as okay. soon as we can expedite it, we'd put it in. All right, excellent, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's move on to the next item which is the crosswalk at the Sudbury Aqueduct Trail. Hi. Colleen um, Breyer, are you with us? I'm, yes, I am here and ready to speak. Um, I, I don't remember all the instructions, but my name is Arlene Breyer. I live in 50 Lynn Road, Needham. Thank you for uh, being here today. This is uh, an honor to be able to present. Um, I submitted a request because um, Strangely, I've been living in Needham for like 15 years and never discovered the uh, Sudbury Aqueduct until recently. And I've gone on that uh, trail walk a few times. And upon having to cross, which I'll share in, a, I'll share my screen, having to cross, um, let me get this up. All right, you can see that. Uh, when you're coming down um, Honeywell right here and the aqueduct, I think it's right there, that trail because then it continues on to uh, Honeywell goes there and Wellesley goes up to the Wellesley Country Club. The trail sign uh, is literally at the, um, can you guys, can you see this, the pictures? You can't see the pictures, hang on, no, let me, let me stop. Man. You know what, I have to share a different thing. Hang on just a second, let me get that. Um, so here are the pictures, you can see that now, right? Yes. The, yes. Okay, so as you can see, the trail crossing is literally at the trail crossing. So it's a very busy street because they're coming around the bend. And um, this is from coming from, uh, I'll be like um, Ms. Tarantino and hopefully my east west are correct. So I'm from Cedar Street going towards where Honeywell turns left and you go up to Wellesley on the right. Um, these are the only signs. So you can see there's a bend right there, trail crossing right there. So by the time they see the sign, it's at the trail crossing. Um, this is a, uh, the trail crossing from the other side. Um, this is a little farther back for you to see that. And hold on, there was one more in there. This is a little farther back going from uh, east to west. So it's a, it's kind of, there's the entrance there uh, to cross, to go to the entrance, to continue on to, I guess, going on to the Wellesley side. It's, it's quite daunting because um, they're coming around fast on this side and coming down this side from two directions. And you kind of have to, you know, Say a prayer and run across the street. Um, so I, I don't know what my recommendation would be. I mean, ideally, it would be a, a flashing, you know, thing that you can push to cross. But I don't know if it's that necessary given how much it's used. So I don't think it's a huge trail that people, hundreds of people, are crossing a day. Um, but I, if, to me, it doesn't make sense. The trail crossing signs are literally at the trail crossing. Um, I would I'm prefer sorry. to have. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Uh, I just want to interrupt you for one second before I don't want to um you to waste your time here with us. Could you show me that on the map? Because I just want to make sure this crossing is in fact in Needham. Because from uh, the photos, I believe you may be in Wellesley. I think it's if both well, it's Needham side and Wellesley side. I, so it's thought, both. I wasn't sure exactly where that is either. It's, so hang on. When I, you're, I thought we were when talking you're... closer to... When you're here on Honeywell, this is still considered, I mean, this side is Needham, isn't it? And then this side is Wellesley. No, that's, no, that's Wellesley. That's, that's Wellesley. Seriously? Yeah. This is yes. Wellesley? Where, the town line is yes, where, back. Where, where, Honeywell well, Street hits, where Honeywell Street hits Wellesley Avenue, further back yeah. on your screen, that's the end of the Needham line. So hang yeah. on, are you are you the, seeing the, the map? Am I, am I sharing the map right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So where your cursor so you, is right now, that where 
where so your this cursor is, the is trail, right now right is Wells Lane. Yeah. So right. Yeah, so on this that's side, trail is really. Awesome. All righty then. Um, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I guess uh, I okay. That's too bad. When I submitted it, obviously it was I. I thought I was explaining yeah. myself too, but I guess I will well, now. I, to... I see what you're saying. My understanding was you were on Cedar Street, closer yeah. to the Elliott School, but where yeah. you're actually talking is uh, Wellesley. Yeah, because Cedar was Elliott. Was about Cedar Street as well. So, right. That's what I. That's my was so, my initial impression. To give to give you some history, uh, Seth, where I think where you're going is uh, we have this problem frequently with the Wellesley Police Department when we respond to that intersection, particularly for crashes. So where Ardmore Road comes out onto Honeywell Street, that is in fact Needham. But, uh, there, but yes. just across the yes. road is, is Wellesley. Yep. So that's wow, where we that's so a little bit of jurisdictional boundary. Uh, okay. I would never have thought that Honeywell on this side was, uh, was Needham. All righty, I guess I'll be speaking to Wellesley. Good luck. Thank I'm you. you. Hopefully have you, you have luck in Wellesley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Now that I'm a Needham resident, I'm not sure they're going to listen to me, but thank you. I'm going to leave this meeting. Thank you all for your service and thanks. Thank have a wonderful thank you. holiday. Thank, thank you. you. I was so excited Wellesley. to present. Arlene, you should, you, should get get job. you should get Wellesley people involved in your petition. Okay, thanks yeah. so much. All right, be well, yeah. everybody. Happy holidays. Bye. So one quick comment on that, which is uh, I actually went and looked where it crosses Cedar Street, which is right near Elliott School. That's what I thought she was referring to. Yeah. And there yeah. are no trail yeah. crossing signs. I didn't see any trail section. crossing either. No. So that right. might be something just, Bob, for you to look at. There's no. Yeah, I, I, I got it. it. Yeah. Well, it, it added to my confusion because if you actually look at the fencing there, yeah, uh, the actual aqueduct. Uh, is there's, it, signs, there's signs that say no trespassing because that's MWRA property. So I, I, I know the trailhead ends behind the Elliott School. So I think that's where my confusion was. So I'm glad she had those pictures because otherwise we probably would have gone around for a little while. And yeah. yeah, I said the same thing to my to my husband and kids. I said, isn't that like chained off over? Like I feel like there's a gate <laughs> where it's locked, like you said, um, Lieutenant. Well, my dog and I had a nice walk over there today. So. I'm glad she submitted that parent petition. Uh, <laughs> it's a great walk when you we walk the whole thing. <laughs> Let's move on to the next item. Uh, Mark Hazer. Oh, you were up. I, thanks. Hey, uh, my name is Mark Hazer. I live at 15 Parkinson Street. And um, actually, can I share my screen? I can do this. Yes. All right. So I just. Can you guys see that? Um, yes. Figure that after the last uh, woman, uh, that I, it was actually kind of helpful to see. So, um, my suggestion was that at this intersection of Webster Street and May Street, um, essentially, that there just be a rather than having well, either adding adding a crosswalk right here or moving the current one, which is on the crossing from Webster to the north side of May Street to the uh, south side of May Street. Uh, and the reason for that is just that there's, uh, as I said in my write-in, um, there's a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic that's coming from, you know, from this side, uh, from over here on the east side, I guess, of Webster. And people tend not to want to walk all the way up here uh, when they can cut across. So they often do, uh, I would see it quite a, quite a lot often uh, more before COVID, but um, still even today I see it. And there's a lot of, you know, this is a, May Street is pretty heavy for bike traffic as well and just regular car traffic. So I, I thought it might be a little bit safer to put a crosswalk in here so that people <laughs> without having to run across the street. Um, illegally or prior to the intersection. Uh, does anyone from our town want to comment on how, how it was determined to put the crosswalk on that side of the intersection? 
Yeah, I, I would defer it to engineering, but we did have um, a private engineering co uh, company with our engineering and DPW to look exactly where to put the crossings and lights at this intersection. And um, there's, there's background to it um, and why it's at its location. Uh, Tony, do you want to speak more on it? The only thing I could add is I believe there's a, isn't there a crossing guard there, uh, uh, Lieutenant? No, not at this location. So then this is just going to be the start of the safety zone, the proposed safety zone uh, in the future. It's one of the locations from May Street all the way down to Rosemary Street. So I, I would not recommend having two crosswalks going across Webster at this location. I, I, I concur from the highway department side. And also if we had, if say we moved it to the opposite side that's proposed, we'd have to one put in a curb cut handicap ramp uh, perpendicular to that location. But as you can see where that red car is, there's a stop sign there. And so putting it at the opposite side stops the traffic on Webster Street before the intersection. So people also can't take a right turn. So it improves the visibility when you're crossing May Street as a pedestrian to the, to, uh, with the vehicle contact. So basically it's, I, it's in the right position for safety at this intersection. Anyone else like to comment? Can I just ask, what's the safety zone you were talking about? That's taught starts starts here and goes to Rosemary. You said, what exactly is that? Is that something that's coming? It's listed in the town wide pedestrian safety audit. We are putting together a list uh, of locations throughout the town to improve pedestrian safety. The first one that we're doing is on Beaufort Avenue next to Perry Park. Uh, that will become a safety zone. That's been designed. And I believe that Webster Street is next. Oh, okay. That's great. I would just add from a, uh, from a pedestrian standpoint, and certainly from the a you know, high school perspective, it seems to me that may, that's a logical spot. Otherwise you'd have high school kids walk having to cross May before they can cross Webster there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I guess either, if you're only gonna have one crosswalk there, uh, either the people coming from the North or coming from the South, someone's gonna have to, uh, you know, walk a little bit farther Go the extra step. Yeah, it just seemed to me that more when I see it, there's a lot more people coming from the south side, and uh, but I'm not there. At, you know, school hours. So I think in in this case, uh, Mr. Hazer, we are uh, probably not going to take action, but we appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Yeah, no problem. No, it's. Good, thank you. Thank you, sir. And let's move on on the agenda. Uh, the next item is um, Mr. Taluri, if you're ready to present. Yes, I'm ready. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, first of all, I, I'm Wasu Taluri. I live on uh, 9 Rosegate Road, Needham. Uh, we have uh, 12 houses on this private road. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank Clayton and Nikki for promptly responding to my requests and putting my requests on the agenda. Um, we have a couple of residents join the call as well. I think we have uh, about five or six other residents on the attendees list here um, um, attending this call. So 
the issue that I would like to bring to your attention is the Rosegate Road intersection with Central Avenue. Um, it's 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 a you know where Central Avenue turns right before um, you know this is between Cedar Street and Webster um, on the on the Central Avenue. So we have experienced a few close calls, you know, and uh, we also noticed uh, some pedestrians crossing the street um, after getting off the bus and during the school time, although there is a crosswalk at, at Cedar Street, people crossing the um, street, I, I'm happy to share my screen. Um, if, if you want me to show where this intersection is, I hope you are familiar with it. Um, so, and we have a couple of high school grads uh, that got recently licenses on our street and more joining them. Um, it's like every time you cross the street, uh, you, 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 from Rosegate, you get onto Central Avenue, especially if you're turning left, it is taking a chance. Um, you know, I know town, town has done a few things over the years. Um, there was a sign, um, on, um, on Central Ave about 259 or 279, the house number, um, they're saying hidden driveway uh, on the right. And there is, there is there used to be a mirror uh, across the street um, at the corner of Central and Webster. Um, so uh, we, we don't have it anymore. Uh, I just wanted to uh, bring this to your attention and, um, um, and also show the street if you want me to. Um, and the intersection that I'm talking about, if you are not familiar with it. Thank you. So I actually drove over there today and took that turn and see exactly what you mean. Um, but I, I think we, I'd like any of the town officials to um, comment on what possible solutions are, because it's just a challenging location. <clears throat> Brian, do we have the authority to put uh, one of those mirrors up on the telephone poles or? Sure. Uh, my understanding, and this has come up in the past, um, and um, the DPW and, and highway being the operational side, um, had many conversations with town council. The opinion of past town council in, 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 in years has been that it's a liability for the town to install mirrors. Um, occasionally a mirror goes up. Um, I don't, I shouldn't really say anything. I, I kind of ignore it if it's a critical coming out of a driveway. Um, but uh, we've been instructed due to liability in the past not to install mirrors. To, uh, anybody from engineering um, have a, other opinion? No. Uh, no, that's correct. We we don't install mirrors um, because they draw the motorist's eye away from the traffic in front of them uh, and to the mirror, and also the traffic that's traveling on the street on the main street. Uh, so mirrors are not typically recommended and the town does not install them. So what about a, a sign that's, you know, shows the curve and a street intersecting? We do that all the time. We could do that at this, uh, in advance of this location, if that's desired. Yeah, yeah, that uh, are flashing LO because, you know, the Webster and this, and probably signal is it too much to ask, um, but uh, a flashing yellow or a combination of the sign and flashing yellow. Um, was so like flashing yellow beacon is, uh, is actually governed uh, by warrants in the MUTCD and we would have to take a look to see if those warrants are met in order to put in a flashing beacon. And essentially what he's saying is by warrants, he means 
It has to meet certain standards, including traffic volume, which is probably unlikely. At uh, you know, because your your street's such a quiet street. No, Central. I'm talking. We are talking about Central Avenue. Yes. Right, but to warrant warning people on Central Avenue, it would require a certain volume of street turning on and off um, at your corner. Can, can I ask, I, I'm not clear where we're talking about based on what I'm looking at on the screen right now. I see Webster and Central, but where exactly so is this, your- This one, you know, if you are coming, this is on, you're coming on Central Lab. Uh -huh. um, so the, the road is here, um, this one. It's a small side street off Central. Yeah. Yeah. And it's right at the it's curve. Past Webster, Rebecca, and then it, it's there before you get to Cedar. It's, it's a very just past, right? Yeah. yeah, before oh, you get to Cedar, right. So that street, so the street, um, so right now with this view, that's, wait, we'll go back yeah. where you are. Where the good pavement <laughs> I'm gonna is. I'm going to orient myself, yeah. sorry. Can you go sorry? back? Can you go back to where you were a second ago? I'm trying to orient myself. Yeah, I'll that's, right, right, that's Webster, so. Yeah, this is Webster. Yeah. Okay, so it's on the same side as Honeywell and Cedar. Yes, correct. Yes, yes. Cedar. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay, so you're saying which direction is challenging? You're saying turning which way coming out of your Turn. street is challenging? So turning left onto, you know, both ways is challenging, but especially turning left because you are, um, you know, you, you are pretty much going close to the oncoming traffic while making left turn, right? So, um, you know, turning left from uh, from Rosegate, if you're coming on to Central Avenue, making left is pretty challenging. Because you're it's crossing, awesome. just to sure. clarify, you're crossing Central at a point where traffic is moving quickly and it's coming around a curve that can't mm -hmm. anticipate that you're there. Okay, yeah. and and is the visibility it, so the and the visibility of that street is not great, right? So there's not you yeah. can't see that there's right. You tried it myself; it's not easy. Okay. Really it's, it. You know, you can see from here. I, I don't, I, you know, we don't blame people coming on Central Street. You know, they, you know, even people. We have seen morning rush hours, the big trucks going on. We could feel the way. <laughs> it's, it, it's you know, it's a pretty busy street, Central Lab. Yeah. Um, I know we have twelve houses, probably thirty-five. 30 cars or so on the on the street um but you know the turn you know getting on to central lab is pretty challenging and especially in rush hour it's like you you just take chance because right. you know you can't really see vehicles coming from left right so it's <clears throat> I mean, it seems to me that having a sign there that says, I mean, I get that it might not be feel like it's sufficient, but even a sign that says that there's a hidden street, I don't know if there's a way to mark the street a little more clearly. Is the street sign in a spot that's... A street what? sign won't help because street yeah. sign, you know, as you can, I'm, I'm not sure if you can. Uh, I, I just, I think to point out, Mr. Tori, too, you're in a school zone. There is a flashing 20 mile an hour zone sign right before your street right. and yes. after it. Uh, unfortunately, I think this is a case of just that you're in a particular location that's just has a lot of volume on Central and Webster, and it's it's doubled when you have school and it's uh, cut through to Wellesley. And uh, unfortunately, I just think you know that signage is in place already, and I think it's just a matter of unfortunately location in this in this uh, sense and just using due caution coming out so i i could see adding a sign that you know that is a curve and a side street indicator um but i think the lieutenant's right that that's probably our the best remedy we can suggest um does that sound like a good, at least a good first step, Mr. Tillery? Yeah, so again, you know, if the sign, you know, it's, yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's better than nothing. Um, I, I think, you know, the, either the flashing LO or, you know, mirror, if the town doesn't support, you know, it, what I heard is you guys, town doesn't, 
support putting mirror on the, is it a liability for Tom? Did I hear that right? I heard yeah. there was a mirror put in by Tom a while back, but it's, it's gone now. <clears throat> um, I've, I've been in the highway for over 25 years. We've never put one in. Um, I don't know if it was beyond that time, but um, there is a lot of conversation that's holding the mirror, but we don't see a mirror there. No. The town probably didn't put it up. It's it was probably, probably put up by a resident. Yeah. Then... On this, this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. No, it's a, that whole, it's just a terrible intersection. Yeah. They, they already did so many, you know, changes with the school zone and everything. And can you exit Rosegate onto Cedar or is there only one way out? No, there's no, this is a dead end street. It's a dead end street. Hmm. The main concern is with the teenagers. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough one. <laughs> Uh, so are there any remedies that we can suggest, vote on? Or are we going to have to say this is just a it's one of those tough intersections that can't really be fixed? Mr. Yeah, what, I, what I can say is we've looked at this in the past um, and when the builder was building new properties there, it's just a really tough location to have um, um, a dead end street pulling into a main drag, a main road. It's tough, the site distance is poor, the traffic volumes are high. Yeah, so if, if we can, again, you know, with the sign, um, I, th I think, you know, I've seen some signs with it and as you mentioned, I believe that was Mr. Seth, um, you know, if, if you can put in a sign with, you know, some signs come with the light showing the road turning to the right. Um, I, I think, you know, that would be a good, good, good start. <laughs> um, so can we request that someone from the town go take a look and see if there's a good place to a reasonable place for a sign. Sure. Hmm. Sure. Um, a motion to do that or can we just. Um... Yeah, if we if we make I've, I've also seen I don't know, I would defer to engineering on this one um, vehicles entering ahead. We've done it as temporary. Um, uh, when construction occurred, this is a really tough intersection. If we can do anything that would actually help, um, but I, I think um, we should we we could talk this after this meeting as well, or if there's a motion to see if um, we could do some kind of signage, trying to um, get get travelers to remember that cars are at this curve entering entering ahead type sign vehicles entering ahead, but I defer to engineering on it. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is there any way that uh, the residents could trim back those bushes there at the corner? That's, we have done that in the past um, because it, this was very, you know, way down before myself and you know, another resident of this street, we, we trimmed these, some of these branches in the past. Hmm. I believe, I, I don't know whether it is towns or, I don't know where that tree is, whether it is the property of this house or it's on town's property, I don't know. It's right next to sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Um, it looks like it's behind, it's behind the sidewalk. So I'd say it's private. Not sure. Okay. This is a tough road. 
Um, if, if I live there, I would tend to take a right because of the um, challenges. I have, a, have a, this is probably way off and I know you're going to say it's like so expensive and whatever. Has the town ever looked into putting a, a traffic light at the intersection of Webster and Central? Uh, that that was reviewed uh, quite a while ago. We could look at it again. Because if you could stop, there would be a you know a time period where all the traffic would be stopped and you'd be able to turn. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that can be looked at, Tony? Uh, we can take a look at it. I I have to say I'm I'm doubtful, but as am I. But I thought at least I should bring it up. <laughs> I, I I think it's a it's a good consideration. It's it's. If, if it did occur, it would be many years out because of the backlog of intersections that are in the queue right now. But um, so I didn't want to give the, the petitioner some uh, sense that this we would be able to expedite it. But I, I think Suzanne, that's a that's a, a good item to relook at the whole intersection plus helping this 12 properties actually be able to get out onto Central in the future as a, an additional criteria. I have to say, I think that a, a, you see that sign that you can see right now, that like curve sign. Yeah. I just think those signs, as much as I think you you all, and forgive me if I'm misstating, I think the town tend to, tends to think that they don't do anything. I think they do. I think they're good reminders. I mean, I think about even, you know, my young drivers, they're good reminders that there's a curve and there could be other people. So I think if there could be a sign that says, you know, curve coming and then there's a hidden road. In the other direction, roughly yeah. across from that sign. Roughly exactly. across from that sign, yeah. I think it's worthwhile. I think people do see them and it's a good reminder that this is a tight curve and there are people pulling out. It's very visible. So Rebecca, maybe you want to make a motion that we, um, <laughs> look at putting a sign roughly across from that. Right, are we going, which somebody give me a direction at least so I don't screw that up. Bob, which way are we going? East, west, north, south? <laughs> Probably south on central, kind of, kind of sort of south. Okay, so. Oh yeah. There okay, so I make a motion. South, south uh, west, heading southwest on central. <laughs> I make a motion to put in two signs on the south, side of the southbound side of Central Ave across from the existing um, curve sign that both indicates a sharp curve and um, hidden drive or hidden street or something that the DP that you know the highway department deems appropriate um, in that spot and a freestanding sign. Or vehicles entering or we could leave that wide open is that what you're saying Rebecca? Yeah, I don't know what yep. the vehicles, I don't know that vehicles entering necessarily means anything. I think saying that there's something hidden coming up, watch out, feels more dramatic to me personally. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if that science has a light, something blinking on it, I, at least people pay attention to it. Um, I, I think that that would be, that, that would significantly help. I think just a sign will help. I think a bright yellow, a sign that's there that's on a pole right before the curve will help. So one of the signs that we do have that's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, not, it's not the cost of a, a, a push to walk intersection or anything is <clears throat> the LED signs that some of us have seen that aren't push to walk or beacons, but they have LED lights around the perimeter, uh, okay. which helps at, at nighttime, especially, but also during the day. Is that what the petitioner is yeah. asking for? Yes. Okay. Okay. I so think that I would be add, helpful. So if I just add LED to my motion, mm -hmm. is that adequate? It is. Okay. Would someone like to second my motion? Before I second it, do 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 we add to that looking at the traffic light situation at the Webster Central intersection, or is that its own thing? I think it's its own motion. Okay, then I second your motion. We can add a second motion, though. I think that probably makes sense if we need to evaluate that. 
Yeah, yeah that 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 would be because Web City is also a busy street, um, not and as, as not as as much as Central. But you know, if it if if it hasn't been reviewed recently. Yeah, I'll make that motion after we finish this motion. Okay, so we have a motion on the sign. Daphne, will you read the roll? Mr. Delgazo. Yay. Mr. Hoyland. Yay. Uh, Lieutenant McGrath. Yay. Mr. Bauer. Yay. Ms. Tarantino. Yay. Ms. Mullen. Yes. Ms. Stein. Yay. The motion passes. Okay. I'd like to make an additional motion for the town to look at the intersection of Webster and Central to see if it warrants a traffic light. I will second that motion. <laughs> All right. Vote, please. All right. Mr. Delgazo. Yay. <laughs> Mr. Hoyland? Yay. Mr. McGrath? Yay. Mr. Bauer? Yay. Uh, Mr. Tarant uh, Ms. Tarantino? Yay. <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Mullen? I, I know, I don't see you guys, and I'm reading the just the names, uh, the last names. Uh, Ms. Mullen? Yay. Ms. Stein? Yay. The motion passes. And thank you very much uh, for right, taking up you. our case and um, and 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 thank taking you. up thinking through. Um, appreciate all your uh, suggestions and you know solving this issue through to come up with a recommendation. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank sir. You. Um, in in terms of next steps, do I need to do anything to follow up? Uh, no, but you can track the progress of you know what's happening on that uh, spreadsheet that Bob Wilson posts on on the website under this committee. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. All right. Do we have any other business? I'm going right through this meeting. Nice job, sir. <laughs> Do you have a motion to adjourn? I motion, I motion to adjourn. I'll second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Delgazo. Yay. All right. Mr. Hoyland. Yay. Lieutenant McGrath. Yay. Mr. Bauer. Yay. Ms. Tarantino? Yay. Ms. Mullen? No, I want to keep going. <laughs> uh, okay. Yay. Okay, and Ms. Stein? Yay. Uh, all right. All right. Thanks, the motion everybody. passes. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. All right. Thanks, see, you, see you next year. See you in the new year. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.